everyone, welcome back. This is Tableau Zen Master Luke Stanky, and in this build, this video, we're going to explore some historical visualizations, or actually just one, from W.E.B. Du Bois, and we're going to look at the filled area chart, uh, but specifically a pyramid area chart, and have it appropriately portioned by each section. Let's just take a look at this example. I'm using Tableau Superstore data from 2020.4, and I'm filling in this triangle with the appropriate area for each of the regions based on total sales. And that's what I wanna be able to recreate this area chart, and I'm using Superstore to do this visualization. And if we dive in a little bit closer, you'll notice I have two WD calculations on columns, and one HT or height on rows. And the big differentiator between this calculation on the left is the inclusion of value, which we'll show you what that is in a minute. But in the other marks card, you'll see it's not there. And we have the visualization essentially dynamically change based on this calculation. This is gonna be really important as I show you the calculations for creating it because it relies on region and value as the level of detail in this visualization. If it's not there, it changes the calculation entirely, and we do it all in one calc. I'm gonna to try to break it down for you when we're going through. Anyway, that's what we're gonna build. Here's how it's set up. Let's create a new sheet and hop right in. I'm gonna start by connecting to Sample Superstore, and I've also added in a special data source. If you watched any of these videos in the past, you know I like to use Tableau uh, and build in a join but connect the data with this one-to-one -one with a placeholder data set. And what this placeholder data set is, I've gone in and Excel and I've created a separate CSV with one column. I'm calling the column value and it just counts up from zero to 200. I don't even need all 200 for this video. I just need five points, really four points, but I'm just over redundant with those five points. If you think about how you would connect together the parts of a trapezoid, you would have four points and you'd need four different points. And then the fifth one is to sort of connect it back to the beginning. So we only need zero through four here in my data set, but I've got a really large data set. I'm just gonna work with it. And what I've done is I've done it, completed a join. And this join is very simple, it's just I calculate a join where this calculation is one is equal to one, and this duplicates, well, it would technically duplicate our data n times over 201 in this case, but we only need five. And this is the key for this analysis. So I'm gonna go back to my sheet and we're gonna get started. What we have to do is build calculations that are gonna control each point. If we look at this triangle, really, we have to be able to control each of these five points, one, two, three, four, and then the fifth all the way back. We've got to control all these to build a polygon. And that's what we're going to do in building three calculations. One is going to be the area calculation. What should the area be or what's the baseline? And then the other calculations are just using that baseline to calculate the width and the height. So our baseline calculation is very simple. We're going to just call it uh, sales percent, and it's gonna be our percent of sales. And we're gonna do sum of sales divided by window sum of the sum of sales. There we have it, very simple. This is gonna give us a percent of total for any particular group. We're using region in this case. Now I can hit okay. Let's build our two height and width calculations. But before we do, we can go ahead and find region Let's go ahead and place that onto color. Let's change our mark type right away to circle. Eventually we're gonna change this to polygon, but I like to start with circles so that we can sort of see the points come together and sort of mentally note if we've made any mistakes along the way. So now let's create our uh, width calculation. And like I said, we're gonna control the width based on whether we have value on our view or not. So let's go ahead and add value while we're at it too. So finding value, again, value is this zero to 200. Well, I'll place that out on my view and I'm going to change this to a dimension, but I'm also going to take value and place it out on filters. I'm going to choose all values because I want to filter it down to specific values, specifically zero through four. I'm going to hit okay. You'll see five points 
One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Five per region. That's exactly what we want to start with. Now our width calculation. So now I, I know my example was called WD, but I'm just going to call this width here. And we're going to say if, and what we want to do is start by building a calculation when value isn't on our view. So if we removed value off of detail, what would happen? Well, we're going to sort of do this and count for this by doing count distinct value. And if it's removed, right, we're going to have more than one value because uh, we have five here that could potentially show up. So if it's greater than one, then we just want to do a, a zero. And this is going to center our text for us. So just know that this top part will center text when value is not on the marks card. The rest are a little bit more work. So we're just going to say else if min of value is equal to zero or min of value is equal to four, then we're going to do the square root of Zn. Zn is going to be a, a null value. I'm going to write all this out and re-explain it. Of lookup of the running sum. Yes, lots going on here of our sales percentage. And then we're going to look back, uh, sorry, running sum. So we got that and we're going to look back one value, look at the previous value. And that's our first section here. What this does is we'll get our percentage of sales and then we'll get a running total from point to point to point so that by the end we've got 100%. But we're going to look back one value. So these zero and four values that we see here are calculating the tops of our, of our trapezoids here. We're going to calculate the top of each of these. And we need those, obviously, because we need to both pull our points together here. So we've got those, but what we're going to say from here is else if our min value is equal to 1, notice how we're managing every single value, then square root of the running sum of the sales percent. This calculation is going to be this point right here. So we, we did 0 and 4. Now one is going to be this sort of point right here on this trapezoid. By the way, these ZNs are here so that we can get calculate the point of our triangle for when we're doing the top values. So now we've got this point over here. We need to go all the way across and pull that value together. Well, that's pretty easy to do here. We're just going to say else if min value is equal to 2. Then we're going to copy this whole section and we're going to paste it in and we're going to put a negative sign in here. And actually, if we were really doing this, this is point zero and 4, this is 1, this is 2, and now we're going to calculate 3. And we can just say else if 2, then we have our then value, and then else which only can be that value number three the top left corner of our four-sided object and we're going to say minus square root in fact it's everything right here so let's just paste that in it's just the negative sign and i knew this was going to happen that's why i was trying to avoid it but of course happens every once in a while if this ever happens you just right click and close your data source hit ok and then uh, paste it back in so let's try that again and we can type in end here. And let's see what we're missing. Probably a parentheses. I'm going to guess it's right here. Sure enough, right at the end. So this is our width calculation. I'm going to hit apply. Let's go find it and place this out on columns. So we'll see some points showing up. We just need to edit our table calculation. The good news is we have 0 and 1 and negative 1. Those are big points that should be showing up edit our table calculation. So we need to do our width calculation across region and we'll see some more dots show up and that's what I'm hoping to see. And our sales percentage, by the way, um, I believe we want to select region here. Yes. Um, I'm just going to do that for now. Um, but you can see our points starting to come together here. We don't have the second dimension, but we can sort of see pieces of it coming in here. I'm going to hit OK. Now let's do the height. I'm creating a new calculation. And this is a fun one, just like the other. Height, 
we're gonna have to control again the level of detail that's going into it so values off the view value when it's off again is going to control where our labels are if you remember we said count distinct one was zero that's so that we could center these labels now we've got to get them halfway between so it's a little bit more complicated to do this in fact the hardest part is going to be the first part of this height calculation so let's go ahead and build this height calculation we're going to go ahead and say if count distinct value is greater than one so if it's off our view then we're going to do in parentheses square root zn lookup running sum of the sales percentage so we got sales percent minus one and then two more this gets us not all the way to the end this is just the first part this is all in this square root section right here now we're going to say plus i know this is like again a lot square root running sum sales percentage and then we'll just take all of that wrap all of it inside this parentheses right here and divide it by two i'm just going to check to make sure it's working yes i got it right perfect um, i'm going to expand this out so if you could um, let's make that easier for us to see in this video nice long calculation that's again when we're creating our labels that's going to center our labels up in our view so we've got that now let's do each of the individual values working around the four corners once again so for the four corners this one's a little bit easier we can just say else if min of value is equal to zero or min of value is equal to three or min of value is equal to four then zn lookup square root running sum i know a lot here but if we want to do this viz it takes a little bit of work i spent a lot of time working out uh, making sure that i knew exactly what we needed to put in here square root lookup uh, comma negative one and then one closing parenthesis perfect last line else this is in fact the last line of code that we need to write for this viz else square root running sum of the sales percent that's it zero three four are going to control the values up top here and then the rest is on the bottom that's it now I can just hit OK on height let's go build this viz we've got width let's go find height click and drag that out oh no what's happening don't worry about it yet we can just edit our table calculation on sales percentage let's select region and on height let's go ahead and select region 2 and what you'll see is we have an upside down triangle that's by design that's how the calculation works we just double click on height here in the rows move our cursor all the way over to the left give it a negative sign Luke what's going on now we just have points well we chose circle so we can just go in and change it to polygon and there it is it's working uh, just as we anticipated let's add our label so we're just going to take width we're going to hit control here we're going to click on width and click and drag it over you see that little orange blue tick there we're going to create a dual axis but on this width we're going to remove value off review don't panic when i remove this it's going to disappear because we no longer have a polygon we just need to click on polygon change this to text there it is uh, now let's just remove text from color uh, sorry region from color to text and we can also go find sales if we want to do a sales percentage we can throw it on there but what i'm going to do is actually go find the raw sales value put it on the view and then i'm going to click in the text and let's move region back up to the top paste that in and let's make it bold there and we'll center these up centered boom now right click on the axis dual axis right click synchronize and then we're on to our very last steps the steps you hear me if you've watched any of my videos you know oh by the way if you see this you've made it you've recreated it go ahead and hit the like button because you've done it you've made it through this video for the most part the last steps are formatting and again how do you format 
Same things I talk about always, same five things. Go ahead, right click and format on the area here, just like I just did, just gonna do it again. Go up to the left, click on borders, remove your row divider. This shows up when we do a dual axis chart. Then click on the lines button and remove the grid lines, remove the zero lines, remove the axis rulers. Even though it says none, click on it and do it again until it's bold right here. And then the axis ticks. You're gonna get rid of those. And then finally, step six of formatting, uncheck show header and you have done it. If you wanna change the order of your values here, you can do that very easily by right clicking, going to region, which is on color. You can choose any of your values, whatever's on color. Clicking sort and then changing your sort order. I'm gonna choose field here. Let's search for sales. And then we can choose sum of sales. This is ascending, that's sort of how we wanna do it. So I can just click okay. And then uh, if, if you want to, on the polygons here, if you wanted to add a line, you could, you can make a dark line, but I actually like doing like a white line so that it separates it all out. Whatever's gonna match the background, frankly. Anyway, that's it. That's the um, pyramid area chart. It's matching to the area of the calculation. I spent so much time figuring it out. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to like. You can also subscribe if you want, but that's up to you. Uh, anyway, we'll catch you in the next one. And we got two more left in this WB Dubois series where we are just like showing you how to create foundational visualizations from a true master of data visualization from back in the 1800s and early 1900s, like someone who really gets it uh, and, and really put together some fascinating uh, designs and understandings of visuals uh, that transcend history. Anyway, we'll catch you in the next one.